book of Isaiah, chapter 44, verse 21, the very last portion of that, that is the promise that God is giving to us as a church family for the year 2019. Isaiah 44, 21. O Israel, you will not be forgotten by me. Israel, ni ennal marakapadu vadillai. O Israel, you will not be forgotten by me, says the Lord, for the year 2019. It's a mighty promise that God is sending to each and every one of us. Israel, ni ennal marakapadu vadillai. Human beings are very fallible. We always look for someone to remember us, someone to take care of us. If someone forgot to wish us happy birthday, we are offended. If someone forgot to call us when we are in need or a trouble, we are offended. But human beings can only go so far. Joseph was someone who was chosen by the Lord. He was sold to Egypt as a slave. He was kept in the prison, in a prison dungeon, in the King, uh, King Pharaoh's dungeon. He did not do anything at all to deserve that. One day morning, as he got up, there were two people who were the king's officers. They both were very much in trouble. They were really worried. And one was the chief butler of the king pharaoh. The other one was the chief baker of king pharaoh. They both were very much in trouble. And Joseph went and spoke to them. And he said, that, what is your problem? What is your anxiety? And both of them said that we've had a dream in the night. The same night, both of them have had different dreams. They have had different interpretations. And they said that because of the dreams, we are troubled. We don't know what that means. And Joseph said that, is it not God who can give an interpretation for the dreams? So tell me your dreams. And first of all, the butler started to share his dream to Joseph. He said that in my dream, I saw that I was standing in front of a vine that had three branches. And the branches were full of fruit. And they were also blossoming with flowers. And I saw in my dream that I plucked the vine and I crushed that into the juice and I gave it to the king. That was my dream. And Joseph said that this is a very good dream. The three branches that you saw are three days. Within three days, the king will raise you up and he will release you from the prison. That you will be set back in the same situation that you were in before. You will have the same job. And then he said that when you come to that position, when you come to that new, the same job that you were in, remember me. Please remember me. I was sold from the Hebrews. I have not done anything at all wrong to be deserving of this dungeon that I am in, so please remember me. That was the request that Joseph had. But the Bible declares in Genesis chapter 40, verse 23, yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. Dearly beloved, in a world when people very easily forget us, in a world where people don't take the time to remember us. God is giving you a promise this morning. O Israel, you will not be forgotten by me in 2019. I will never forget you, says the Lord. Our God is not a, not a man to forget. Isaiah chapter 49, verses 14 and 15, when you see, the Bible says, Zion has said that, but God has forgotten me, forsaken me, and the Lord has forgotten me. That is what it is saying about that. But you know what the Bible says? The Lord is saying, can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you, says the Lord. Or three, then gatpatin phileki irangamal tan palaha ne marapalo, avar kar marandalum naan unnei marapadillai. Avar kar marandalum naan unnei marapadillai. Oh, what a great joy it is. Even this morning, that is the promise that the Lord is speaking to every one of us. Israel, you will not be forgotten me, by me. Sometimes we think that God has forgotten us because as human beings, we do some mistakes. We see something wrong. We do something wrong. We commit some sins. And then we say, God has forgotten me because I am a sinner. But dearly beloved, I have good news for you this morning. The Bible says, God remembers us even while we are sinners. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 20, Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he not a pleasant child? For though I spoke against him, I earnestly remember him still. Ephraim, Anla Piriyamana Kumara Nallava, Nana Avanukka Virodhamaka Pesinadu Mudarkondu Avanai Nenaitthu Kondu Rukkarein. 
நான் அவனுக்கு விரோதமா பேசின நாள் முதற் கொண்டு அவனை நான் நினைத்து கொண்டிருக்கிறேன் தட் இஸ் வாட் த லார்ட் சேஸ் த லார்ட் சேஸ் ஐ ஹேவ் சாஸ்டைஸ்ட் யுவர் ஃப்ரை ஃப்ரேம் बिकॉज யுவர் ஃப்ரேம் வாஸ் நாட் வாக்கிங் இன் மை வே சோ ஐ ஹேவ் சாஸ்டைஸ்ட் ஹிம் ஐ ஹேவ் டிசிப்ளின் ஹிம் எட் ஃப்ரம் ஃப்ரம் தி டே ஐ ஹேவ் ஸ்டார்டட் டு டிசிப்ளின் ஹிம் ஐ கண்டினியூஸ்லி ரிமெம்பர் ஹிம் டியர்லி பிலவர்ட் திஸ் மார்னிங் தி லார்ட் இஸ் ஸ்பீக்கிங் டு யூ ஓ இஸ்ரேல் யூ will not be forgotten by me the bible says in psalm the lord remembers us in our lowly state nammude thaavil nammai nenaikiravarai thudiyungal avar kiruvai endrum ullathu men may remember you when you are in a high state when you have all the money people will remember you when you have all the influence in the world people will come and ask for help from you but when you are in a lowly place when there's nothing that is going on your way there's no one who will remember you but the lord says i will not forget you my child you will not be forgotten by me samson was a mighty man of valor he was used mightily by the lord but yet he was disobedient to god he was disobedient to the commandments that was given to him by the lord as he was going straying around this way and that a day came when the philistines arrested him they took out his eyes he was blinded and he was put into bronze fetters and he was taken into the temple of dagon the philistine king and he was called a clown they asked him oh, let him come and perform at that time samson had a little prayer he had a little prayer he said oh god oh god remember me yet this one time yet this one time oh lord remember me as he prayed that prayer the bible says the strength came upon him the strength that was lost from him came upon him he was able to bring down the entire temple and 3000 people were killed of his enemies when he was dead along with them dearly beloved if god could hear the prayer of a man who was used by him but who has fallen away as a sinful man who has met a mighty defeat in his life because of the sins if he had a prayer asking god to remember him and god would remember him how much more would you not remember us in 2019 that is why the lord is giving you a promise o israel you will not be forgotten by me you will not be forgotten by me does not matter where you have been it does not matter at what stage you are in right now this morning you have a wonderful blessing that is before you the lord is saying i will not forget you as we are going into 2019 you can inherit that promise you can inherit the promise every one of you can inherit the promise because our god is not a respecter of persons he is not a respecter of persons he gives this this promise of remembrance for everyone the bible says the lord has many books he has a book called the book of life he writes the names of everyone upon the book of life if this morning if your name is written in the book of life you should rejoice and glorify the lord If you are not sure that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, you can have a simple prayer in the presence of God. Oh Lord, I want to be remembered by you, O Lord. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I will turn my life over to you, Lord. If you even as, as you make this little prayer, your name will be written in the Lamb's book of life where it will be remembered for eternity in the presence of the Lord. The Bible says the Lord also has a book of remembrance in Malachi chapter 3 verse 16. The Bible says a book of remembrance has been written in the presence of God so that even people who fear each other they will speak to each other but the lord will hear their prayers and write that write that down in the lord's book of remembrance even as you go into year 2019 if you have a need in your life if you have a problem in your life that you are sharing with someone who fears god someone who's a god fearing believer the lord says i will hear that and i will record record that in the book of my remembrance that i will take care of you not only that the bible says he has a book of tears he has counted all your tears every tear that you shed the lord says he is recording that in the book of tears because psalm is saying you number my wanderings you put my tears into your bottle are they not in your book he's writing dearly beloved this morning the lord is speaking to you he says i know your tears i know your wanderings i know your conversations i remember you and you will not be forgotten by me that is the promise for 2019 be remembered by god is the mighty blessing that is why psalmist is saying the lord has been mindful of us he will bless us and he will bless the house of israel and he will bless the house of aaron when he remembers us he blesses us and he remembers us he blesses us in the year 2019 
the Lord is saying, Israel, you will not be forgotten by me. You will not be forgotten by me. Israel, ni ennale marakapaduvadillai. God is not a respecter of people, but he is a respecter of principles. Every time we come together on a New Year service like that, we very much desire to hear a promise from God. We want to hear a prophecy from God. We want to receive something from God. It's very simple for you. If you want to receive that blessing, all you have to do is only one thing. Obey the principles that God respects. God does not respect a person's face. Just because you are educated or you are not educated, God does not do you any favors. Just because you are rich or you are poor, God does not do you any favors. But if you are a respecter of principles of the word of God, then he has something for you. This morning he says, according to Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 14, if you would hear my words that I am speaking to you this morning, and you would heed all those words and do according to that, all these promises that I am going to say to you will come and overtake you. நான் இப்பொழுது விடுதலை சொல்லுகிறேன் என்னுடைய கட்டளைகளை எல்லாம் நீ கை கொண்டு அதன்படி நடந்தால் நான் சொல்லுகிற ஆசீர்வாதங்கள் எல்லாம் உண்மையிலே வந்து உண்மையிலே பலிக்கும் ஹலலுயா தட் இஸ் த ஒன்லி பிரின்சிபல் தட் யூ நீட் டு நோ இஃப் யூ வுட் ஒபே த வேர்ட் ஆஃப் காட் யூ டோன்ட் ஹேவ் டு ரன் லுக்கிங் ஃபார் அ பிளஸ்ஸிங் யூ டோன்ட் ஹேவ் டு ரன் லுக்கிங் ஃபார் வேர் யூ கேன் கெட் தட் பிளஸ்ஸிங் ஃப்ரம் தீஸ் பிளஸ்ஸிங்ஸ் வில் கம் ஆட்டோமேட்டிகலி அப்பான் யூ தே வில் கம் அண்ட் ஓவர் டேக் யூ தட் இஸ் வாட் த பைபிள் சேஸ் தட் இஸ் த ஒன்லி பிரின்சிபல் தட் மேட்டர்ஸ் காட் டஸ் நாட் கேர் அபவுட் எனி பர்சன் not big now not whether you have gone to church for since your childhood or not but you are here this morning and he is only asking you one question are you a respecter of the principles of the word of god if you would do that this morning in the year 2019 you will receive the inheritance of this wonderful promise that he has given to you israel you will not be forgotten by me i want to share a few things a principles of what god does not forget what god remembers in the lives of his children and we are going to pray and ask god to help us to inherit this wonderful promise that he has for us in 2019 as a church as families or as individuals first of all what god does not forget what he remembers all the time is that he remembers his covenant psalm says psalm 105 verses 8 and 9 when we read he remembers his covenant forever the word which he commanded for a thousand generations he remembers his covenant the word that which he has commanded for a thousand generations he does not forget in tamil it says aayiram thalaimurai kendru avar kattalaitta vaakayum abrahamude avar pannina udanbadikeyum isaakukku itta aanayeyum endendraikum ninaitirukkar he remembers the covenant that he makes with his children this morning the one way for you to inherit this promise that god will not forget you is to enter into a covenant with him as you enter into a covenant the bible says very clearly that he does not forget his covenant he remembers the covenant for a thousand generations not only just for your life but the life of your children their children up to a thousand generations god will remember the covenant that you enter with him this morning that is the principle that you need to inherit this blessing what is a covenant a covenant establishes a relationship a covenant could be a contract a covenant could be something that is a transaction that is made between someone who is greater with someone who is lesser typically a covenant is made by the lesser to someone who is greater but our god is so mighty yet he is so humble he says i will come and make a covenant with you he himself will come and make that covenant with you the bible talks about many different com- covenants that god has made in the word of god that he kept for thousand generations the very first commandment that he made he made a covenant with noah noah was a man the lord was looking at the world that he has created he saw that people had corrupted their ways upon the world and the lord says as he saw he saw that every intent and every motive of the heart of a human being was always evil so it hurt god's heart it grieved god's heart that he made men on this world at that time as he was going looking for people to see what will i do for my for the mankind whom i have created why did i create this mankind he saw one man that one man was worthy to make a covenant with god that was noah as god was looking all over the world as he saw that the the minds of all the people are always corrupt he saw this one man noah who was found righteous in the presence of god he was always righteous man that is why god says oh noah come into the ark you and your household because i have seen you righteous before me in all this generation if you would be righteous before god you will be able to enter into a covenant with god 
Noah entered into a covenant with God. God said, make a wonderful ark, and I want you to go into this ark, your family and yourself, and I will make this covenant for you because of your righteousness. You and your wives and your children, your, wi your, ch your children's wives, they all can go into this ark, and I will protect you. Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 to 14, when we see God made yet another, another covenant with Noah after the, the flood was over. When the floods were coming, all the people came and banged at the door. They were saying, Noah, you should open to us. The Bible says Noah was a man who was a preacher of righteousness. He was not only a man who walked in righteousness, but he preached righteousness to the people around him. That is what the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. God saw Noah and the eight people who were with them to be saved because he was a preacher of righteousness. This morning, God says, let me make a covenant with you. If you would be righteous, let me make a covenant with you. This morning, if you say, Lord, I want to make a covenant of righteousness with you, Lord, for the year 2019, I will walk in righteousness in my family, then the Lord will enter into that covenant with you. That is the covenant of righteousness that God made. Because of that covenant that God made for Noah, you and I are still seeing rainbow. When the rainbow comes, the Lord says, I will be reminded of my covenant that I made with Noah, that I will not destroy the mankind ever again by a flood. Hallelujah to the Lord. Amen. He is the God who remembers his covenants for a thousand generations. And this morning, you can make that covenant with him of righteousness. Lord, forgive me, O Lord, for all the places where I have missed, O Father God. And I make a commitment before you, O Lord. I will enter into this covenant of righteousness just like Noah did. I will walk in righteousness for 2019. And then the blessing of the Lord will come upon you when the Lord says, you will not be forgotten by me. God also made a covenant with Abraham. He made this covenant with Abraham because of obedience. God said, Abraham, come on out of the nation that you are in. Come on out of the country that you are in and go to the place that I am going to show you. I will bless you. I will make your name great. I will bless all the people of the earth within you. Everyone who blesses you will be blessed. Everyone who curses you will be cursed. In you, every one, every generation will be blessed. In you, all mankind will be blessed. That was a wonderful covenant that God made with Abraham because of his obedience. He said, Abraham immediately said, yes, Lord, I will go. This morning, you can enter into that covenant with God. Say, Lord, I will be obedient to you, Lord, in 2019. Just like how Abraham did not question your guidance, did not question your direction, O oh Father, but he immediately obeyed. I will enter into this covenant of obedience with you this morning so that you can remember me and this covenant for a thousand generations. When Abraham went into the promised land, God made yet another covenant with him. It was a covenant because of his faith. Abraham believed in God. God counted that to be righteousness for him. And he made another covenant with him. He said, I'm going to multiply you greatly. I'll bless your generations that they will be like the stars of, of heaven. They cannot be numbered at all. That was a second covenant that God made with Abraham. This morning, our God is a covenant-making God. He is a covenant keeper, and he is here to make the covenant with you. You can enter into the covenant of holiness like Noah. You can enter into the covenant of obedience like Abraham. You can enter into a covenant of faith just like Abraham did, and God will enter into that commandment and keep that command, covenant for you for a thousand generations. There was also yet another man in the Bible that says the Lord made a covenant with. It is a very unlikely person. You may not even have remembered him all the time. His name was Phinehas. Phinehas was the son of the priest Eleazar. He had something special that God thought that I'm going to make a covenant with him about. What was it that he had? He had a zeal for the Lord. He had a zeal for the Lord. When he saw that the entire tribes of Israel were prostituting themselves, they're committing sins that God has, has banished from them. He was filled with zeal that he wanted to intervene and do something about it. Dearly beloved, if you would have that zeal for the Lord. Many times we come into this nation and we say that, who cares? Anything that happened outside, I don't care. But if you would have a zeal for the Lord, if you would have a zeal for the house of the Lord, if you would stand in the gap and pray for the Lord, you will be able to enter into a covenant because the Bible says, the Lord is saying very clearly, the Lord spoke to Moses in Numbers chapter 25, verses 10 to 13. The Lord said to Moses, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned back my wrath from the children of Israel because he was zealous with my zeal among them so that I did not consume the children of Israel in my zeal. Therefore, behold, 
I give him a covenant of peace, an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God and made atonement for the children of Israel. If you and I were standing in the gap and making atonement for the nation, for the sins of the nation, asking the Lord's forgiveness, praying in the presence of God, asking the Lord to forgive the nation, then the Lord will say, I will make a covenant of peace with you. When you enter into this covenant this morning, the Lord says, I will remember you and you will not be forgotten by me. Perhaps when you think about all these men, Noah or Abraham or Phinehas, you're thinking that, oh, they are so blessed, they have so many great covenant. But you know what? God has a better covenant for you and me. When we come into the New Testament through Jesus Christ, through the blood of Jesus Christ, he has given us a better covenant. A better covenant founded on better promises. A better covenant made with the blood that was shed by Jesus Christ. The blood that speaks better things than that of the blood of Abel. This morning, that blood of Jesus Christ has been shed for you. That blood of Jesus Christ has been shed for me. And with that blood, you and I can make the covenant with the Lord. We say, Lord, forgive me, O Lord, with all, for all, with all my sins, O Lord. Your blood can cleanse me from all sin, O Father. Oh, cleanse me and forgive me this morning. If you would enter that covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, that is the guarantee that God will not forget you. That is the promise that God is saying. Oh, Israel, you will not be forgotten by me. The entire year 2019, you will not be forgotten by the Lord at all because you are entering into a covenant with him. This morning, I encourage you to come into the presence of God, asking God, I want to make enter into a covenant with you, Lord. Not only for me, but for my generations, for a thousand generations of my children, O oh Lord. I want a covenant of peace, O oh Father God, between you and me, O oh Father God, and between me and my household. When one king, Solomon, prayed a prayer that God would hear the prayers that were being offered in the temple of Jerusalem, that God would honor that prayer for so many generations to come. How much more would, you, would he honor his word this morning as we make a covenant with him? through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ that has been shed for you and for me. That is the covenant that has been founded upon the blood of Jesus Christ that can cleanse us from all sin. This morning, that is the first thing that God does not forget. He does not forget the covenant that he makes with his children and you and I can make that covenant through the blood of Jesus Christ this morning. And that is the good news of New Year 2019. The second thing God does not forget, the Bible talks about, is Psalm 9, verses 11 to 12. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare his deeds among the people. When he avenges blood, he remembers them. He does not forget the cry of the humble. He does not forget the cry of the humble. God looks at the people's tears. Every tear that you shed, God remembers that. He puts them in his bottle, and he gives an answer to every tear that you shed in the presence of God. Are you going through a tough situation? You can shed that tear in the presence of God. And God will remember that tear. You may be walking through a path of turmoil. You may be walking through a path of so much difficulty. If you will shed your tears in the presence of the Lord, God will hear that tear. God will remember you for the tear because he accounts for every single tear. He keeps them in his bottle. That is the promise of the Lord. In the word of God, we see... Many people shed tears that God remembered them immediately about because of the tears that they shed. We see about a man by name, Peter. We all know him, but there was a situation in Peter's life when he had to weep bitterly. Jesus said that tonight you are going to, you're going to deny knowing me three times before the rooster crows. Peter said that, no, I will not deny you, Lord. I will even give my life for you. Even if all these people run away from you, I will not run away from you. He was talking so boldly in the presence of God. God saw the pride of his heart that, that moment. And he said that you had to learn humility, Peter. You are going to deny knowing me three times tonight before the rooster crows this morning. And when the rooster crowed, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Peter immediately remembered what Jesus told him. And he was moved with the guilt. He was moved with conviction. He ran out of the palace and he wept bitterly in the presence of God. Dearly beloved, that tears God has kept in his bottle. He said that, Peter, I am giving you the keys to the kingdom. You will open that no one can shut. You can close that no one can open. I give you the keys to the kingdom. He gave the keys to the kingdom to Peter, the same Peter who denied knowing the Lord because God remembered his tears. 
this morning in all your inadequacies, in all your problems, all your times when you have failed to meet God's standards, you can just shed a tear of repentance in the presence of God. Asking God, forgive me, O Lord. When you turn and ask the Lord for forgiveness with the tears, God sees the tears and he forgives all those sins. And he blesses you manifold in spite of all the tears, all the sins that you may have done. One day Jesus came into a Pharisee's house as Jesus came into the Pharisee's house, the Pharisee did not give any water for Jesus to wash his hands. As Jesus came to, sat, uh, to sit down, there was a woman who was a prostitute. She came in there. She did not say a single word to the Lord Jesus Christ. All she did was she came, she broke an alabaster flask of perfume, the fragrance that she had. She poured that on the feet of Jesus Christ and she wept and she, she just cleansed Jesus' feet with her hair. That's all she did. She was just constantly weeping. And Jesus saw the tears. He knew what was behind the tears. And he said to the Pharisee, Simon, let me ask you something. There was a man who had two people who were debtors to him. To him, the one he had given them a small money, another one he had given them a lot more, more money. And he had forgiven both of them of their sin, of their debts. Who would he, who would love him more? And the person to whom was more indebted will be the more loving, the Simon said. And Jesus said, you are correct. And because she has loved more, the many sins that she has done have been forgiven. Dearly beloved, this morning, uh, tears of repentance is what God is looking for. He does not forget the tears of repentance. When you cry, I shed, I mean, shed tears in the presence of God for any places that you have gone incorrectly in the presence of the Lord. God will hear that and he will forgive he'll forgive, forgive you. We see also people who had cried in the presence of God when they were in many different situations. There was a king by name Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a man who was given a bad news by the prophet Isaiah. Prophet Isaiah came to Hezekiah. He said that the Lord is telling you just set right your house. You are not going to be made well. You are going to die upon this bed. And immediately the Bible says Hezekiah turned himself towards the wall and he cried bitterly and he prayed asking the Lord, Lord, remember me, O Lord, I pray. Remember me. Remember me, O Lord, how I walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart, O Father, and I have done all these things that were right before you, O Father. Remember me, O Lord, this time. And God saw the tears of this king. Isaiah had not even left the house. He had just turned around to leave. But God said, go back, Isaiah. I have a different word for you. I say, I must have been thinking, God, you just told me to go give this man a message. <laughs> I gave that message, you say, you changed your mind? What happened? Because God saw the tears. And God said that, I'm going to add 15 years to your life, Hezekiah. And he was made well. God healed him miraculously because of the grace of God. This morning, my dear beloved, if you're going through any needs at all, that you are not even able to share with others, you're going through an oppression, a turmoil, Right now, as you turn your, yourself and pray in the presence of God, God will see your tears and he'll bless you in 2019 and grant you deliverance in that particular area. There was a woman by name Hannah. We all know the story. Hannah was always prodded and provoked by her rival, Penina, because Hannah didn't have children. Penina had children. They both were married to the same husband. So Penina would always provoke her and she did not have a response to give her all the time. And she knew that she had no other place to go. She came to the tabernacle of prayer. As she said, sat down. The Bible says she was not even able to speak because of the overcoming anguish that she had, the grief that she had upon her heart. And only her lips moved and tears were rolling down. And Eli saw her. She saw that she, she thought that she was drunk. He said, that, how long will he be drunk? But she said, no, because of the anguish of my heart, I have spoken in the presence of God thus far. And God heard that prayer. That year, God blessed her with a child. Because Hannah said that, if you would give me a child, O oh Lord, I will give the child back to you for life. As long as I live, I'll give the child to you, O oh Lord. And God saw that the prayer of tears that she has had. And she, God immediately granted her that petition. Dearly beloved, whatever may be the situation that you may be in, maybe you are going through a, a reproach, a path of reproach, where people are speaking against you. God can look at your tears and he can bless you. I remember when we were married many years ago in 1990, we didn't have children for three years after we were married. We were praying for a child 
He even named Samuel, Samuel before he was conceived. All of that. God had given the promise. But it was not easy. You may be thinking, well, three years, what's the big deal? <laughs> right? Well, somebody was saying that, I guess. But it was a hard path for us as we went through the three years. One day, I remember, I was on a business trip. And we were living in a city called San Leandro in California, and I was coming home from a business trip. I got out in the, in the airplane in the airport, and I was on, uh, on taxi. And I was talking to this taxi driver about Jesus. About I was telling him about the love of Jesus Christ. I was so much um, in zeal for the Lord. So I was telling him about the love of, love of Christ. I don't know how our conversation went to this matter. But he asked me, do you have children? This man had no idea who I was. He was just a cab driver. He was taking me from the airport to back home. And when I told him that I didn't have children yet, he gave me a statement that struck me. I was left without any speech at all. I felt that I was in a corner, felt in a corner. I was reproached. I did not have an answer to this person. I said, God, how can I go talk about you to people when they are saying that, hey, your God has not even given you a child. How can I talk, to you, talk about you, God? I came home totally broken in my life. Dearly beloved, perhaps that is you. Perhaps there's someone here who's going through a path of reproach. You're moved to tears because of the reproach. But this morning, I have good news for you. Our God remembers the tears. All the prayers that's coming out of your tears, God will hear that and he will answer that prayer for you. Hallelujah to the Lord. In 2019, you will see a breakthrough because you have had tears in the presence of God. God always remembers the tears of his people. Some people have gone through tears in many different trials that they've had. We see in book of Exodus chapter 2 verse 24, the people of Israel were groaning. They were crying because of the oppression that they were in. They, were, they did not know how to get out of the slavery, the bondage that they were in. They were really in a corner. They were pushed into a trial and they did not know how to come out of that. And the Bible says God heard the groaning of their hearts. The groaning of their hearts. Israel put the Adimei Tanathal Tavit to Murai to Kundarin Nahir, our Adimei Tanathal to Murai to Satam, they were Sunny the Retina, they were our Permuche Kate, Tom Abraham or the Panin of Udan Bedikin and Nevukurna. Hallelujah. Yes, how great our God is. As he saw the people were moved in tears and they were groaning. God said, oh, I made a covenant with Abraham. I need to go do something for them. God immediately sent Moses back into uh, Egypt so that he can take the people, lead them out to the promised land. Dearly beloved, this morning, God hears the language of tears. He sees the language of tears. He sees the language of tears that, they, that you may have. Some of you may be crying that you didn't have child, children. Some of you are crying because you have children. Regardless of what that is, God wants to bless you. I saw a testimony about a boy, my boy by name, Ezra Yakin. Ezra Yakin was a teenager in Israel. He lived in the time of time between World War I and World War II. British had declared that they were going to build um, the, the nation of Israel. First of all, they had this Balfour Declaration that they said that they were going to set up Israel in the place of Palestine, and they were going to create, carve that out to be a two-nation, um, two-nation part of land. But then they went back there, back on their word, and they became opposed to Israel, gaining its independence. A few people, few Jews, were there in the Palestine at that time, and they started to create an under underground guerrilla force to go against all the military. And this boy, he was a teenager, Ezra Akin. He decided to go join the force so that he can just go be an underground force to go back and uh, attack the, the British troops all the time. His parents came to know about that. They were moved to tears. They said that, no, you should not do that. But he said that, I will do. And every day, nighttime, he'll just go out and he'll go into the underground force. He'll just do all these attacks against the British troops and he'll come home. And every day, as he stepped, stepped out, you would always hear his mom, tears, with tears. She would be praying in the room. She would be saying, Lord, please keep Ezra safe. Oh, Lord, please keep Ezra safe. You would always hear that prayer. And she would always be praying with tears. She saying, Lord, you had to keep him safe, oh, Lord. And as he would walk out, he heard this one prayer as he was walking out one night. She was saying, Lord, let the troops not even know what he's doing. Make him invisible, Lord. Make him invisible so that he will be protected. He walked out. He did not know God at that time. 
He did not know Jehovah God. He was just a teenager, a rebellious teenager, wanted to do whatever he wanted to do. <coughs> but this prayer stuck in, in his heart. He said that make him invisible, Lord, that the troops don't, should, not, should, not, should not even know what he's doing. As he stepped out, he did not know the British had declared a curfew that night. Anyone who stepped out that night could be shot dead. The shoot on sight orders were given, but he did not know. He went to this place of meeting with all his fellow soldiers, or terrorists, you can call them, or underground fighters. They all said that you're going to go to this particular place, you're going to be in this particular building in a room, you're going to assemble these machine gun parts that we've gotten, make machine guns, you're going to attack the troops tomorrow as they're coming that way. So that was a job that was given to this boy and two other boys. They were to carry the machine gun parts, and they had other gun guns with them as well, to that building, and they had to assemble the machine guns that night. As they were going, suddenly they hear, heard gunshots all over. So they were hiding immediately. They did not know what happened. A man who was a poor man living there, a family of 10, he was shot dead because he did not know that there was a curfew that night. As the three boys were walking, suddenly there was a British jeep, armored jeep was coming right against them, shining the light upon all three of them. Three boys having all the bags with them and the guns with them. They froze, they did not know what to do. They were right in the middle of the eyesight of the jeep. The jeep came, it did not even stop. It did not even stop. As the jeep left them, he was thinking, was I really invisible for them? How could they have not seen me? How could they have not seen three teenagers walking with guns in the middle of the road and not take any action at all? But the jeep did not stop. He went to the place where they were supposed to make all these things. They assembled the guns. Suddenly they saw a big company of soldiers coming to check that entire building. Every footstep started coming in there. People were like, they were afraid. They did not know what to do. And one of the boys, was stuck with panic. He started to shout. He said, that, no, 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 I want to die. I want to tell them that, that we are here. So he was like in delirium. The other two boys were trying to contain him. And the thought was running into his mind that I am going to die, to die this morning. That's what he was thinking. But as they were going and searching every room, they kicked down the mattresses, they kicked down all the walls to see if anyone was hiding. There was one room the soldiers did not even stop by. It was that room that three were in. The entire building was ransacked. There was an hour and a half of search, 90 minutes of an entire platoon of soldiers. They searched every nook and corner, but they did not even open the door to that room. Do you know why that is? Because of the prayer of tears of a mom. It was the prayer of tears of a mom. Perhaps you may be thinking about situations that you've been crying and praying for. This morning I have good news for you. In 2019, the Lord says, you will not be forgotten by me. As you shed your tears in the feet of the Lord, he's saying that you will not be forgotten by me. First of all, God remembers his covenants as you enter into a covenant with him. He will remember you for 2019. God remembers your tears as you shed your tears in the feet of the Lord. The Lord will hear you and God will remember you in 2019. Finally, the Lord also remembers one more thing. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10, for God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown towards his name. In that, you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Enendral, ungal kriyayum, ningal parisutta vangalukku uliyum seyududhanalum, seyudu varugaradhanalum, tamadu namathirukkaha kaanbitha anbulla prayasathiyum marandu vidukaradharukku devan anidhi ullavar allave. He does not forget all the ministry that you, have, you are doing, all the service that you are doing for the kingdom of God, for everything that you have taken effort to help someone, to do something for the Lord, something to glorify the name of the Lord. The Lord does not forget that. Even in 2019, if you would take a step in faith saying, Lord, I will do the ministry that you have called me to do, Lord. I will do that, O oh Lord. And God says, I will not forget because I'm not an unjust God to forget all about all your works. There are many different services many people can do. Mordecai was a man who once told the king's courtyard that there were two people who were trying to murder the king. He was just passing some information. He thought that it was just a small thing. He was just telling the king's court what's going to happen to the king. And they found that these two people, Bictana and Teres, were actually plotting a murder against the king. And they were punished. Days went by. One night, suddenly, the king was not able to sleep in the middle of the night. And the king said, well, let me read all the diary, what happened in our kingdom. As he was reading through all the diary, they said that Mordecai has given information about the two people who are plotting to kill the, kill the king. And the king asked a question. He asked, did anything good 
done, was anything good done for Mordecai? Was any reward given to him for the information that he has given to the king's court? And they said that nothing was done. And he immediately wanted to find out what should be done for a man whom the king delights to honor. That was the question the king had. And Haman came into the court. He had not knowing what was happening. And the king asked Haman, Haman, what should be done to the man whom the king delights to honor? And Haman thought in his heart, who would the king delight to honor other than me? And he said that, oh, the king's dress, the vestments should be, should be brought. He should be attired in the king's attire. And the man whom the king delights to honor should be made to sit in the king's horse. And the horse should be given in the hands of a, a very important prince in the king's courtyard. And the prince should take, this eunuch should take him throughout the streets of all the, of the city and declare before him that that shall be done for the man whom the king delights to honor. And the king immediately said, okay, go do all of that to Mordecai. And Haman didn't know what to do. He had to go do all of that. If an ordinary king would delight to honor one of his subjects like that, how much more would God not honor his children who does something for him? God is saying, oh, so-and-so has done something for me. Has, has, have I done something for them in return? Have I blessed them in return? That is what God will delight to honor his children. Because the Bible says that if one serves me, my father will honor him. That is what the Bible says. If you would enter into a, an area of ministry that the Lord has called you to do in 2019, as you commit yourself to do, do what the God, what Lord has called you to do, then the Lord says, you will not be forgotten by me. Because I will not unjust to forget the work, the, all the work that you are doing for my name's sake. Cornelius, he had a little service. He was not even a Jew. He was a centurion. He was a Roman centurion. But he did one thing. He fasted and he prayed. And he gave alms to people. He uh, gave, gave all the help that he can give to the poor people all the time. One day suddenly an angel of God appeared to Cornelius. An angel did not appear to many other people in those days. Many Jews did not see an angel come to their home. But the angel came to Cornelius' home. He said, Cornelius, all your alms and all your good deeds have been coming to the presence of God as a remembrance to him. God has remembered what you've been doing. You've been helping all the people who were in need. You've been doing all the alms, giving all of that. So God decided to send you the way of salvation. And that is how Cornelius became the very first per person of the Gentiles to be saved. Hallelujah to the Lord. He was the first Gentile person who was saved and who was received the anointing of the Holy Spirit. When Peter came to the household of a Gentile, everyone was thinking, why would a Jew go into a Gentile's house? Because it is not heard of before. It was unheard of because of that one Cornelius. Because of what he has done, you and I are saved as Gentiles. Hallelujah to the Lord. This morning God says, if you would do the service that I have called you to do, whatever it is, you may be asked to go help someone who is in need. You, as you go out of the church this morning, God has a mission field for you. You can take something and go help someone who is in need. Perhaps the homeless person who is sitting in the street that you see all the time, that you can give them the gospel. You can give them something to, to help them for their hunger. As you do that, God says, I will not forget you. I will not forget you because you are doing something to show my name, to glorify name, to do the service that I have given to you. There was a woman by name Dorcas, and Dorcas died. When Dorcas died, everyone sent to Peter, saying, Peter, come. There's this prophetess Dorcas. She has died. You have to come. And um, Peter came to the home. He was in Joppa. As he came, came, came into the home, all the people were standing there. They were all having tunics and all the different dresses that Dorcas had made while she was alive. And they said that she made all these for us. Now she's no more. You have to do something because of the love and compassion that she has had to help someone in need. Because of that little deed that she did, as Peter prayed, she came back, came back alive. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, this morning the Lord is saying that if you would just do something to show my love to the people who are in need, I will not forget you. That may be your mission field. Perhaps this morning, as the Lord is challenging you, you had to go out and do what God has called you to do to, to make a difference in the life of someone who needs you to make that difference. If you would do that, if you make the commitment for 2019, the Lord says, oh Israel, you will not be forgotten by me as you do my service. That's not the only service that you can do. You can serve God through offerings. The Bible says in Psalm 20 verse, verse 3, Psalmist is saying, may he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. 
Many times we think that we are so privileged to give to the Lord and the God is a debtor, so he has to remove, receive something from us. God does not need anything from us at all. He is not a debtor for anyone. God says, if I am hungry, I won't tell you because a thousand cattle on the, on the hillside are mine. I won't come and tell you that I am hungry. But it is God who is giving you and I a privilege that you can be blessed in return. God is saying that I will not forget the service that you are doing. Let God not forget your offerings. Let him receive that offering. Let him receive that burnt sacrifice. When you give an offering to the Lord, not all offerings accepted by God. When you see in the book of Genesis chapter 3, the very first murder happened over an offering. Cain and Abel, they came to give an offering to the Lord. The Lord accepted the offering of Abel. God did not accept the offering of Cain. And Cain was angry about that, that he murdered his brother Abel. Dearly beloved, you can come into the presence of God, but if you give an offering with your heart not being right with God, God will not accept that offering. You don't have to give something to the church so that the church has food. It's God who's trusting you. I remember when I was growing up as a young boy, I shared that before as well. As I was growing up in the church, we used to, with the young the youngsters are all helping with the women's uh, fellowship in our church and in our, in our village. And they used to have this annual con convention. So they used to do this fundraising for this convention. This is how they did the fundraising in India. You, we all know that. They, had, they give the little bunny box to everyone's house, houses. It's made of little clay. So they give it like two months before the actual event is happening. So everyone will put little coins or whatever they have in there. So after two months, we the youngsters will go and collect all these money boxes from the homes they had had that for two years or two months. So whatever money that is in there, it is taken as an offering for the convention that was uh, conducted in the city, in the town. And one year I remember that I we brought all of that money and gave it into the church. And there was this uh, old lady by name Amir Dubai Saniyasani. And uh, I had not known her before. I have not seen her since. That was the only time I know her. And she was a speaker for the convention. She came. As they all prayed together, she said, she set aside 135 rupees and 85 paises out of that offering. This was a collection of all the offerings that was broken down from the money boxes. We were all gathered, all of, the, all of that together. And she said that, set that aside. And she said that that was not given with the right heart and we will not take it into the offering. She said immediately that they have given that with despise, despising that giving. Dearly beloved, this morning, the Lord is saying that if you have to be remembered in the presence of God, you can serve God with your offering, with your right heart. With your right heart. Because the Bible says God blesses. He decides to bless a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. Whatever you give to the Lord, give that cheerfully so that God will bless you. David was in a situation once in his life. As he has made a mistake, God has asked him to choose between three evil that was supposed to come upon the land. And after his prayer, God sent the plague upon the nation for three days. Many people were dying, and David cried out in the presence of God. And he says, Lord, it was me who made the mistake. Why, why, are, you, why are you punishing all the people? Please let the plague stop. And God at that time told him to go to a particular threshing floor. And he has to build a... Um, altar for the Lord and give an offering to the Lord. And as he went there, he saw this farmer who had the threshing floor, Aruna. Aruna said that, please take the, the oxen that I have. Take the implements that I have for the threshing. Make your offering. Make your offering. I'll give you all of that freely to the king. But David said something very, very significant. He said that, let me not take something free and give an offering to the Lord. But I will pay for that. I will pay for that. An offering, has, you had to pay the price of the offering. You got to pay the price of the offering. When you give, giving a price for the offering and bringing that in the presence of God, God will bless you. He will remember that offering that you made for him. Not because he's lacking something, that he needs something from you. No one can give anything to God. He blesses everything, everyone with everything. There was only one person ever in the history who came to Jesus and said that, let me give you something. That was the devil. The devil said that, I'll give you the entire world if you'll fall down and prostrate and worship me. That was one person only. He offered something to give to Jesus Christ. You and I cannot offer anything for him, but it is a privilege. It is a blessing for us to give something for the service of the Lord. When you do that, obediently, in the presence of God, God blesses you. Jesus was sitting and he was watching all the people put in the offering, in the offering, box. 
people would pretty feel uncomfortable. Why is this guy sitting and watching? Who is everyone putting? How much everyone is putting? That preacher wants more money. That's why he's sitting and watching. That's what they would have said about Jesus Christ. But Jesus was watching everyone putting the money in there. And after he saw everyone, he saw this poor widow. She put the little two pennies that she had. And he commended her for what she put. He may give her $10,000, but that's not given cheerfully. God cannot accept that. But if you give with your truthful heart, Lord, I want to serve you, Lord. And I'm giving this offering as a token of what you have given me, what you have blessed me, O oh Lord. God can honor you that. And he said, O oh Israel, you will not be forgotten by me. Not only that, there are other ways you can serve in the kingdom of God. If you see in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 35, the Lord says, I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who shall do according to what is in my heart, in my mind. I will build him a sure house, and I will walk, he will walk before my anointed forever. When we do anything at all for the Lord, the Lord watches basically how we serve the Lord. Maybe you were called to be a minister leader. Perhaps you were called to be a small group leader. Perhaps you were called to be a, a Sunday school teacher or a youth teacher or some other parts of the ministry the Lord is calling. But as you see, as you do that ministry to glorify the Lord, to please the Lord, not to, not to please men, not as men please us. The Bible says very clearly, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6 to 7, not with eye service as men please us, but as born servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with a good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. If you do the service as you're doing it to the Lord God himself and not to men, only then the Lord will in, in bring you into that service and he will be pleased with that service. And he has said that, he says, my, my, my children, my Israel, you will not be forgotten by me. You can do these three principles. You can enter into a covenant with God this morning and he will remember his covenant for a thousand years. This morning you can bring all your tears into the feet of the Lord. And the Lord says, I will not forget the tears of the humble. And he will remember that for you. And thirdly, you can do what God has called you to do in the kingdom. Whatever it is outside the church or inside the church. But if you do what you do truthfully before the presence of God, the Lord says, O Israel, you will not be forgotten by me. This morning, that is what the Lord is saying. In Isaiah chapter 44, verse 21, the Lord starts by saying, Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, for you are my servant. You are my servant. You have to first remember that, and then I will not forget, forget you. O Israel, you will not be forgotten by me. Yaakobe, Isravele, Ivaikale, Ninai, Ni in Dawson, Nan Unaiguru Wakine, Ni in Dawson, Isravele, Ni in Almaraka Padavadale, Ni in Almaraka Padavadale, Ivaikale Ninai, Avagana Venetu Pastum Pulu, they would have supposed the Rendana Machibi Kumpulu, Katha Solidra, Nan Unai Marapadale, Nan Unai Marapadale, and the Katarugula Kwaka Kodura, Renda the Patamala Andale Katarugula Marapadale. Renda the Padma, the Aunt Mulumiahri, and Kandi in Padre, and Atakum Pulu, Marava, the Katha, Muluku, Irundula Karam Pedit, the Valina Tua, our Galipulu, and Nathum, the Valina Tekara Devan, Eremia, Renda, Renda, the Diharam, Uput Renda, the Vasantan Katasolu Solukura, Manava Titan, Arda Igle, Abra Nangalayam, Manavalantan, Nahe, Abra Marapano, in Jananglo, any Mudia, the Nartla, Yenna Marandavitar. My children have forgotten me for days without him. That is what the Lord is saying this morning. The Lord is challenging every one of us to remember him in our life. As in 2019, as we promise in the presence of the Lord that we will remember him, that we will enter into a covenant with him, that we will bring our tears at his feet, that we will enter into a service with him, he will remember us. Let's stand to our feet as we get ready to go into the presence of the Lord for a few minutes of praising and, um, and praying in the presence of God. You know, as the, in the Old Testament, in the book of, um, and, and the Lord was telling to the people of Israel, as you're going to battle, you had to do one thing. What you got to do is to blow the trumpet. You make, make two trumpets, and the Lord says, you had to blow the trumpet. The blowing the trumpet signifies praising the Lord, praising the Lord. He says, when you praise me, when you thank me, when you blow the trumpet, you will be remembered in the presence of your God, and you will be delivered 
from your oppressors, from your enemies. That is the, pres- that is the blessing that God has given to us. This morning, we are, to ask the, we are to praise and glorify the Lord. We are to thank the Lord to inherit the, pres- to inherit the promise that God has given to us. What is, the, what, is it, what is it we need to do? We have to, first of all, thank the Lord. Lord, you have remembered me, O oh Lord. Lord, you have remembered me so far. I want to thank you, O oh Father God. In the name of the Lord, I will thank you, O oh Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, because you have not forgotten us in 2018, O oh Father God. Lord, you have led us so far in 2018, O oh Father God. As you praise and glorify the Lord, the Bible says, as you praise me, as you glorify me, as your voice goes to the heaven of praising me, you will be remembered in the presence of God. You will be remembered in the presence of God and he will save your children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, the Lord is speaking to many of you. Some of you need to do a covenant in the presence of God. Some of you have not made a covenant with him. You need to today make a covenant of, of, of peace with him. You need to make a covenant of holiness with him. You need to make a covenant of righteousness with him. You need to make a covenant of faith with him. This morning, the Lord is saying, you need to make that covenant, my son. You need to make that covenant, my daughter. That is a challenge the Lord is placing before some of you. Some of you, the Lord is saying that you are walking through the tears, my daughter. But this year, in the year 2019, I am going to bring an end to the tears as I remember your tears, as I bless you in return for all the tears that you have had. Some of you need to enter and say, yes, yes, Lord, for the thing that you have called me to do, do, O oh Father God. For the ministry that you have called me, O oh Father God, I want to say, yes, O oh Father God. That is what the Lord is doing, all of that. As you are pondering what the Lord is speaking to you this morning, let us sing this song. If you know this song, you can join with me in singing. Thanking the Lord, Lord, you have remembered me, O oh Father God. I want to thank you, O oh Lord, and I give you glory.